Welcome to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons, Ask Judy. If you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can tell when I post something new. Edna asks, how was it accepting newcomers to the Walton family for everyone when there was such a tight bond between the cast, especially like Cindy, Pearl, Serena, and Jeffrey characters that came into the house? Uh, I'm not sure who Pearl was. I don't know if you're referring to Rose, um, but you know, we, we had such great casting people that the actors who came in to join the show always sort of fit. Uh, Leslie in particular playing Cindy was just a gem. She became not just someone we loved having on set, but someone that we very much embraced in our personal lives as well. And she still is someone that we see regularly and that I am in regular contact with. Uh, so she was very easy to kind of come into this into the show. Same thing with Keith Coogan, who played Jeffrey, and Martha Nix, who played Serena. I have seen them subsequently at various Walton reunions and so have stayed in touch with over the years. I know as a cast, we tried really hard to make people feel welcome when they came onto our set and worked with us. We wanted them to feel relaxed and we wanted it to be a pleasant experience for them. That was just kind of the way our cast was and the way our set was. Um, so we were always very accepting and tried to make it comfortable for guest stars. Uh, you know, sometimes you just gel with some people more than others. So I, I, I would say that that happened where there were some people I worked with for some time, but perhaps didn't, you know, so have a reason or an opportunity to socialize with away from the work but all of our recurring characters, we were all pretty close. Melissa asks, did you have much time off doing the series? How many days did you work each week? Shows on TV today don't have that many episodes anymore. That's, that's very true. We worked about nine months out of the year because we did 22 to 26 episodes per season, which is like never happens anymore. Uh, and we were an hour long episode. So we took six and a half days to film. We did have Saturdays and Sundays off. Uh, we would start filming for the season usually around May, and we would take um, we would take holidays, some holidays off, not all. Like we would take Thanksgiving off. We would usually have about a week at Christmas, sometimes two, um, and sometimes it was one other point in the year when we had maybe a week long break. But mostly it was nine months out of the year. We'd wrap up sometime in maybe February or so. And then for those of us in school, we'd go back to public school for that three months. So it wasn't really like we had time off. <laughs> we were back to public school and under the pressure then of getting caught up back with our own personal school. And for me, you know, having to just uh, hit the books and, and, and they weren't always doing the same thing I had been doing at the studio. So uh, I had to get caught up and figure it all out and keep my grades up so that I could continue to have a work permit to work. Uh, during episodes, if you had a very light storyline, then you might have days off. While we were in school, we still had to show up and, and do schoolwork during the week. Um, but otherwise, if you were done, then you might get a half a day off to do whatever. Uh, once we were finished with school, then if I had a day off, I had a day off. But you were always sort of on call because if something had to change with the schedule, then they might suddenly say, oh, we need you tomorrow. So you could tentatively make plans, but you had to be ready to change them at any moment because we were under contract and our first obligation was to be available when they needed us at work. Natalie asks, I enjoyed the episode where you were working as a county nurse. I wound up becoming a public health nurse myself, city style, but dreamed about how cool it would be to work in a rural area. I'd like to hear your thoughts about playing a nurse. Well, good for you, Natalie. I think what you what you and all the other health workers do is so amazing and so very, very valuable. Uh, I was perfectly happy to play a nurse and then play a doctor on TV, and I've done that on, on other shows as well. Uh, I found it much easier to do on TV than I would have found it in real life. Um, I so admire what those of you do to, to really care for people. I feel like by comparison, what, what actors do is a little more frivolous that we just try to lighten people's moods and entertain them and put a smile on their face and maybe bring a laugh here and there and a tear here and there all in, in the sense of telling a story. 
Uh, so I really enjoyed, though, playing Mary Ellen, uh, particularly during when she was a nurse and, and riding up into the backwoods and taking care of people. So I really enjoyed those storylines, and, and uh, I felt that what my character was doing was very valuable, so that felt good. Sandra asks, I would like to know, what would you have done in life had you not been an actress and in real life now, a singer, and why? Uh, interesting. Uh, I started acting so young. I was about, oh gosh, maybe four or five when I started doing little musical recitals and then did theater and then did TV and then did commercials. And then when the series ended, I went back and started doing musical theater and then got into writing and directing. Uh, so when I was younger, because I was pretty much focused on acting, there were moments I got into riding horses and jumping horses, which I loved. And and no one else in my family at that time was involved in horses at all. I actually got interested because of a costumer that I worked with on the Waltons who took me to a horse show uh, and took me out to see her horse. And I, and I said, I want to do that. So at 15, I started riding. So there were points when I thought, oh gosh, if I weren't an actor, I'd want to train horses or be, you know, somehow involved in working with horses. So that was something early on that I was aware of. Um, and then later on, I would, I would think about it, but I always felt like I wanted to stay in the creative field. So that's why I got into writing and directing and singing and things like that to, you know, behind the scenes work in theater and stuff too, uh, because basically I'm, I'm an artist at heart. J.E.S. asked, did you ever watch the Waltons while it was originally on the air? Or did you avoid watching it as you were on it and at the time didn't want to watch what you just finished? Um, I usually watched on Thursday nights. I'm, I mean, when the Waltons first started in 1972, when we started airing, uh, there weren't recorders. We didn't have recording devices. So if I didn't watch the show on Thursday night at 8 o'clock when it was on, I didn't see it. Maybe I could catch it when it was in reruns in the summer. Uh, but so some episodes I never saw because I wasn't available at that point in time to watch it. Uh, but I did try to catch it, particularly if it was an episode that I had um, a prominent storyline in. Sometimes if it was something that I'd had almost nothing to do with, I might skip it. Um, so there honestly may be some episodes I never saw. The other interesting thing is that, um, you know, people ask me about episodes and about working with certain people. If I wasn't working that day, I may not have ever met that guest actor. So because we were filmed rather than taped live in front of an audience, if you weren't in a scene, a lot of times I just plain wasn't there. So there were people I never got to interact with and storylines that once I'd read the script, you know, I just wasn't around for any of the filming. So it's always kind of fun for me now when I'm doing these these videos to look back and watch episodes that I either haven't seen for years or may not have ever seen. So I, I become just a just an audience like you, but with a lot more inside information. Uh, I don't like watching myself ever with other people. So if I'm watching my work, I tend to want to watch it alone. Uh, it's just to this day, not easy for me to sit and watch myself. So I get self-conscious if there are other people around <laughs> or if the lights are on or if people are talking or commenting. So that's just, just one of my quirks. Someone had posted a comment question asking about what some of the various different technical positions were on the crew. And one of our directors, Ralph Sinensky, was kind enough to post an answer to that. So for those of you who might have a similar question and didn't see Ralph's answer, I'm gonna read it for you. I can answer that. Gaffers are the lighting technicians. They are the people who do the turning and aiming lights according to the director and lighting headman. Grips do the physical tasks involving the sets, furniture. If you're not a grip, don't you dare try to move a chair. Cinematographer is the headman supervising the cameras. His crew is his camera operator who runs the camera during the take, camera assistant who was with the camera operator during the take and in charge of the focusing of the camera. So there you go. Those are gaffers, grips, 
and electricians and camera operators and camera assistants. Thanks for watching this segment of Ask Judy. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons about episodes, answering your questions on Ask Judy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.